Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today I am featuring this stamp set. Um, this is the stamp set from Spellbinder Stamp of the Month Club for November. Um, just some kind of housekeeping things. If you're interested in this set, uh, you can sign up. If you sign up in the month of November, first of all, it's $10. Like, hello, stamp set for $10. Yes, please. Um, and then uh, it's if you order just a, through... November 1st through the 30th that you'll get this set um, and then they have a they have a whole bunch of different clubs that you can sign up for that are all really good deals um, but anyway so let's get to the card portion of it that'll be linked below if you want to go check out Spellbinder's deal on this stamp set so I had originally played around with this a couple of different ways and I just couldn't find anything that really suited my style um, I've kind of been in a little bit of a crafting rut. I've got a lot going on in my, a lot going on in my personal life. I'm sure you're shocked. Um, and so I just really couldn't find anything that spoke to me. And when that happens to me, I go back to the things that I love. Like I stop trying to be trendy and new and technique-y and I just go back to the things that I love. And so the things that I love are bold black outlines, Copa coloring, uh, one layer cards, scenes, all of those things. So um, that's what I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome to another uh, classic Kelly card. <laughs> um, so this design I think was originally intended to be a diamond and it is so pretty that way. But I wanted to look at it as one of those um, like the geometric uh, home decor pieces that are they're typically metallic and I thought that that would be a really fun way to use this so that's why it is flipped quote-unquote upside down um, so I'm going to just do my Copa coloring the way that I normally do so I start with my lightest color work out to my darkest from my darkest back into my lightest um, I did not do my usual uh, red color blend I stepped I stuck mostly to the 20s family. I did add my shading with my R59 just because for reds I have not found a better color um, than the R59 for my darkest shadows and I wanted my poinsettias to be red. I was the greenery and the um, florals that are on this are really the only opportunity I had to add any real color um, so I wanted to make sure that those colors were bold and bright and eye-catching. So these pieces are a little bit smaller, um, so just take your time, go slow, only use the tip of your marker. You don't need a ton of shadows to make it look dimensional. Like as you can see here, now I'm only, I'm on my way back to my lightest color, but for the most part my petals are still pretty light, and that's how I'm going to keep them all separated from each other so that it doesn't look like a dark blob flower. Um, that's why those the highlights are so important, the shadows are so important so you have dimension, but the highlights are super important for uh, also for separation. So I'm just going to do that, work out to my lightest color, and then I'm just kind of going to show you um, a little like one of each uh, because I colored the other poinsettia the same exact way. And then um, I'm going to do these little berries down at the bottom. And for the little berries at the bottom, I'm pretty much going to break my own rule. My rule is that I start with my lightest, work out to my darkest, darkest into my lightest. However, these berries do not have a lot of real estate. They are smaller, but I still want to get that dimension in there. So I'm starting with my darkest color. And I am, the reason that I, this is my rule, this is not a hard and fast Copic rule. Well, there really are no hard and fast rules in card making do whatever brings you joy. Um, but for me, I'm heavy handed. So whatever color I start with tends to be the one that I put down the most of, which is why I don't usually start with my darks. However, um, like I said, smaller area, so I didn't have a whole lot of space to work with and I needed to get that darker color in there and I didn't want to over blend. So I literally only put in a dot, folks, a dot of that R59, my darkest color, and then um, I just stuck it all on one side. So my darkest color was all on the left-hand side for me. You could do them any way you want. And then I'm going over and again, just dotting right over that darker color with my R29. 
And for these berries, my lightest color will be this R22. There will be no 20 in it. Um, so I'm just going to, sorry, I kept getting interrupted in my card making. I'm like, if you have a family, you know, they think that you should be doing things besides card making. And I highly disagree, but nonetheless. Um, so this is going to be my lightest color and I'm just going to completely fill in those circles. Uh, just, you know, so that way there's only three layers of color. They're still going to blend really well and I don't have, um, I don't risk the bleeding out or anything like that. So once that's done, I'm going to move on to, I forgot a berry. <laughs> it happens. Um, I'm going to move on to the greenery. I like to use a couple of different shades of green, um, especially during Christmas time. I feel like it just creates interest. So I'm using my uh, YG90 family, starting with the 95, uh, 97, and the 99. Um, and I'm going to do the leaves for the poinsettias and I'm going to do the leaves for these little they're going to be white <laughs> white flowers at the bottom uh, and then that way I can use a different green for my pine and for my mistletoe that way there's just it creates a little bit more interest gives me an opportunity to bring another color into the color palette even though they are the same they are still different because the other greens that I'll be using are a little bit more blue green um so yeah, life has been very busy. Um, actually, tonight I am squeezing my voiceover in uh, in between laundry and making dinner and Peanut's homework and this conference that I have to talk to his teacher. Um, they decided to do them online versus in person. Totally get it. Um, and actually, it's more convenient for us because there's really only, like, you're really only talking to the teacher for 15 minutes. So rather than have to drive, you know, 15 minutes to the school, wait for our turn in line, have our 15-minute meeting, uh, and then drive 15 minutes back home, I can just sit here in my robe, in my jams, uh, and wait for my 6.15 appointment, which is what I'm doing while I'm talking to you. So, um... Yeah, we're just, it's crazy. Our schools are still open. We're rolling right along, though um, our governor, DeWine, has recently announced in Ohio that our numbers are getting higher um, and that uh, he's looking at not necessarily a shutdown, but a slowdown. I don't really know what that means. During the shutdown, life really didn't change all that much for me personally. Uh, that's obviously not true of everybody. Um, but because we are both um, first responders, we were still working. Um, you know, really, it was the at-home schooling that was the biggest change. And for the most part, um, Eric, you know, got him logged on while I was sleeping since I'm working night shift. And uh, then you know, I would get up while he was in the middle of school and, uh, you know, kind of field any questions or whatever. So it was, you know, kind of a team effort. Um, and then, you know, knock out any homework that he had, but him being back in school, um, like, first of all, every child is different. And I was not a proponent of sending him back. Um, I just wasn't. I was worried about it. I was worried about him seeing my family. I was worried about what he would be exposed to. Um, you know, just like every other parent in the world, we're all just trying to make the best decision with the information that we have and the best decision for each family is a little bit different. But ultimately, he really struggled with the at-home learning because um, he just, he had a hard time paying attention. He had a hard time getting his work done because while they're trying to teach them math and language arts and, you know, these other core things, they're also trying to teach them computers because, you know, now they've got to open this tab and log into this Google Zoom meeting or, you know, whatever it was. I think it was Google. Um, and then they got to log into this and they got to switch between tabs and now they're taking their tests online on their computer. And this is all new things for them. So they're trying to teach them new information, but also then teach them how to use a computer and it's struggle bus city. Um, so having him back in school, I think has been really good for him. Um, so I'll be interested to see whether or not they decide to keep them open or if they decide to close them. Um, I'm sure just like everybody else, you know, we're all, we're all in the same storm, just not in the same boat. Um, so anywho, back to this card. Um, 
So I did the berries on the mistletoe yellow, I know, but um, I really needed just another yellow element uh, besides the center of these le or center of these flowers. And then for the flowers, again, I kind of cheated because I didn't want them to get too gray. So I actually started with my darker color and then I just put like one line down each petal to create a little bit of depth from the center. And then I went over that with the C1, um, not all the way, just enough to blend out that C3 and I left the edges white. It's going to be enough to give me some dimension and but still have them have the appearance of being a white flower, especially once we get the background in, which let me just tell you this background, <laughs> this background, you. Um, so I wanted to color it like a diamond, like it was intended. So you could see what that would look like and how I would color that. So I started with two very light blue colors. It's a B01 and a B quadruple zero. And so if I was doing this to look like a diamond, um, I would just add shading to where um, the, the lines are um, to give it a little bit of dimension. And then, so I'm starting with my darkest color. I'm going to blend this out with my lightest color, like to the white. I'm not going to completely cover it. Um, and then I went back in with my darkest color to just kind of darken up those lines um, and make sure that you could see that shading. Um, and then that's all I would have done. That's I would have just left it a clear looking diamond. And you'll see that once, once I'm done outlining all of the things. Um, but because I wanted to use it a little bit differently, I still left that same shading in there because I do want it to look clear. Uh, but we're going to change up um, the background just a little bit. Um, just because I, you know, like I said, I was been struggling a little bit with some card design. Um, not because there's, I mean, there's so many good things out there. Um, but sometimes your brain just gets stuck in a rut. And mine kind of was. Um, also, like we had this beautiful Indian summer that was like, 75 80 degrees for a week uh it did snow last night for the second time um so but i'm just having a hard time my brain is having a hard time processing that it is almost christmas and thanksgiving is next week like i was um texting with nathan's dad uh because sometimes he has to work on the weekends um and that means that even though it's not quote unquote my day, I end up keeping him for a little while until he gets off of work, which is no big deal. Um, but then that usually means on his off day, uh, which is typically Thursday, that he will pick Nathan up. So I asked him, does that mean you're picking him up from school next Thursday? And he was like, next Thursday is Thanksgiving, Kelly. And I was like, yes, yes, it is. So he will not be in school. So that makes sense that you will not have him right? Yes. Good talk. Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's just it, like all of my days are running together. I had an appointment with somebody that I knew was Friday between like 1230 and one o'clock. And so I sent him a text message and was like, hey, you know, ended up having to do this running a little bit late. And he responded with today is not the 20th. And I was like, no, it isn't. Today is not the 20th. So like just all of my days are running together and it's getting a little crazy in my brain, but you know, we're make, we're making do. Here I started outlining with the BO2 and it just was not dark enough. So I went in with a BO4. I am going to speed this up eventually just because this process of doing this background took so long. So, so long. Um, and this is typically why I usually mask my images and then um, use distress inks for two reasons. First of all, it saves me a ton, so much on uh, Copic ink. Um, and I already own the Distress Inks and their refills. So like it just makes good sense to use less of that to cover up my background. But there was a lot of little tiny pieces, parts in this uh, decor. So I decided that I was going to use um, Copics. And the other reason why I usually use my um, distress inks is it just it covers a larger surface area with a smoother blend um, 
So here, I'm not even kidding you. I ended up having to re, this is not normal by the way, but I ended up having to refill my marker probably like three times. And this was my own fault. And it's because I was terrified of overfilling my marker. Um, I don't, I usually, you know, put in enough ink until the nib is just wet. Um, because I don't want any bleeding out when I am, you know, coloring an image. That's the worst thing ever. Um, so I try not to overfill them. I try very hard not to overfill them. And so I wasn't putting enough ink. Every time I was filling it, I was not putting in enough ink, especially with this B quadruple zero to like completely cover the whole background. I just wasn't putting enough in. And so I was creating more work for myself. So I kept having to stop and then refill my marker and then come back. Um, so eventually I got it done. I did get it done. But if you're going to do this with your Copic markers, understand you're going to blend, 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 blend. It's not impossible to do by any means. You just have to keep making sure that you're working over that area since you're coloring over such a large area that you're just continually working it until they blend in. Also, wait until it dries to make a determination because um, sometimes it will look like it's not blending because it's very wet. Uh, but that is like you just have to let it dry to see how, you know, how it shakes out. So, um yeah, so that's where we're at with that. I told you earlier, like the geometric um, holders I've seen are like mostly metallic, but I didn't want the whole thing metallic and it was impossible for me to mask off the decor around it. So instead I'm doing a little bit of cheating. I'm going back in with a metallic marker. This is a Jelly Roll gold pen and I am going right over those black lines. They, it is opaque. So it will opaque, for those of you who are going to criticize the way I say opaque. Anyway, um, they are metallic. And so it will cover this black line completely. It will be solid. And so I just went through and outlined that. One thing to note on that, um, where the pine trees come over the line, like the little pine needles, I did just go over it with the solid gold line because I outline all of my images um, with the black Copic Safe pens. I'm just going to fix up those lines when I go over them. Um, it would have just been too time consuming to try to go in between each individual pine needle. Um, so you can see there, there's a little bit of shine on it, which I love. I think it makes it super kind of fun. And then here's where I'm going to go in and, and fix those little needles so that it doesn't look like there's a gold line right through my uh, little pine tree pieces there. So if I was doing it as a diamond, this is pretty much exactly how it would look. Um, I'm going to go through and do my black outline like I normally do. And I think it's a really, really pretty image. But because I love scene cards and I also like to stretch my stamps I'm going to do something a little bit different now so I'm going to take my um, t-square ruler and I'm going to go in with some light gray Copic markers uh, and I'm going to give myself a little countertop shelf area for this to sit on I um, I didn't drag it over my metallic because I was worried about smearing it um, so I just went in between that and then I'm using the lightest one. Um, sorry, I totally knocked my camera trying to get my marker. I used the lightest one inside the, what is now the glass portion. And then um, I used a darker one for the actual countertop since it would be lighter uh, once it, like once you were looking at it through something. So this is just gonna give it something to sit on. I'm gonna go back in and fill in uh, that countertop with my lightest gray. I started off with the C family and then straight up after all I had, all the refilling I had to do with my blue markers, I did not wanna refill any more markers. That's the truth, that's what happened. And so I was being lazy and so I switched to warm gray. Um, they work really well together. It's not a huge deal um, that I have a, a cool gray because I did go over all of it just to blend them in. So I'm going in, I think this is a C3, and putting down um, this color to make my countertop. And uh, then like you'll be able to see once it's, it's starting to run out. 
like it's not it's it's losing its business um and i use my gray markers a lot so they probably do need to be refilled more often but since i'm lazy we're switching over to the w3 i'm going to go right back over the top of what i've done to change the tone of it and then i'm going to fill in the rest of it i did um eventually you'll see i did choose to trim it down and the reason i chose to trim it down was because i had a lot of open space I did do a couple of things to fill that in, um, but the sentiments um, are a little bit on the smaller side. I did not completely prepare to do a scene where maybe I could have built a bigger sign or something like that um, to put my sentiment in. Um, so I trimmed it down to give myself more, to make it look more compact so that it didn't look just so open and empty. Um, I am going to have to go over this bottom a couple of times just to kind of blend everything in. And then I am going to go back in with some darker grays to give it a shadow because um, that would make sense. It's sitting right on top of a countertop. Um, so here's those, the ones I've been using, the W3 uh, and the W5. And then the W7 is going to be my darker shadow that's going to go right up against this. And then for one of the pine needles, like you can see how it's, you know, they're pokey, so they're not solid. So the one that's angled up, I'm just going to do a line, an angled line underneath as if it was casting a shadow down onto the table because it's not touching, but it would still have a shadow. Um, and then I'm going to go back and blend that out with my W5 and then eventually to um, my W3 again. So this is just another way we're getting a little bit of that dimension and so it looks like it makes sense on the countertop. Here, um, it's, I think at this point it has been, has it been trimmed down? Mm, I can't really tell, I'm going to be honest. But I did want to get my sentiment in there, and for this I am totally comfortable using gold embossing powder because I'm not going to have to do any masking. So I'm going to uh, heat it with, or treat it, treat it with um, my embossing bag to get rid of any static. I'm going to ink it up with some Versamark, stamp it down, and then I'm going to um, heat set it in gold so that it's all, you know, matchy-matchy to my little geometric um, home decor piece I've got going on here. And I can tell you it's not trimmed down because it should be more to the right. Once I trim it down, it'll be more to the right. <laughs> um, so just doing that gold, and because I don't use gold all the time, I don't have a separate container for it. So when I do this, I just use a scrap sheet of paper um, to make sure that I can dump all of that right back into its container and I don't waste any of the embossing powder. And then I'm gonna heat set that. I always heat up my gun beforehand so that it um, melts the embossing powder really quickly and it limits the warping. So at this point it's been trimmed down. I decided to put it on a white card base so that it would have a little bit of a border. And um, I am, um, it still looked very blank to me. Still looked very, um, I don't know, empty. So I'm gonna add a little bit more to it. Uh, I'm gonna add some pine and some mistletoe in front of this. Now obviously I don't wanna do any masking so I'm very limited, um, but I think it's okay. I think it ended up being okay. So I'm gonna stamp the pine and then um, a little bit of the mistletoe in the top right hand corner um, just to give like that visual um, look of three and fill in my space as if this whole thing has been decorated and we're only getting just a little snapshot of it. Um, and then I'm again gonna put in a little mistletoe in the bottom just to um, have a little bit of a different color. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, color the berries, everything. I'm not gonna show it to you again because Lord, we've been here together for a hot minute now, haven't we? But everything was colored the same. Um, and then I'm gonna add some glitter over, this is the just clear glitter pen over the berries, the flowers. Um, same thing with the ones that are hanging down and the ones that are on the countertop. And then for the um, my highlights to add some interest to it, I'm going to go back in with that gold pen on the berries and just do a little dot of color so that they kind of catch the light a little bit. And then for my red berries, I'm going to go in with a white gel pen and do the same thing to create a highlight. This is something that's so simple that really transforms the way that they look. Um, so if you don't have a white gel pen, I would highly recommend it. I prefer the Jelly Roll medium tip ones. Um, I know there's a lot of people who love Signo. They never worked really well for me. And these are much cheaper. 
Uh, I did add a little bit of yellow into the center of my poinsettias because I had forgot to do that before. And then I covered the whole thing in my good old Scotch foam tape and I'm going to mount that to my white card base. Uh, again, this is just something, even though it's a one layer card, that will give it a little bit of interest. And then that's it, that's the whole card. So the Spellbinders clear stamp of the month will be linked below. Again, 10 bucks, great deal. Um, and that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.